The best way to understand how to do a design of an experiment is look through a particular example. And we're going to look at a classic one of the specific volume of an ideal gas. And the model that we will be uh, using will be a statistical model, but we'll compare that to the ideal gas law. If you recall that the ideal gas law, the specific volume is equal to R times the temperature divided by the pressure. We're going to use a statistical model where the specific volume is going to be equal to some coefficient B plus another coefficient M1 times the system temperature T plus a coefficient M2 times the system temperature or system pressure P plus a coefficient M3 times the system temperature and system pressure. Okay. And so we're going to provide some data. We're going to look at two temperatures, 100 degrees C and 150, and two pressures, one atmosphere and two atmospheres. And these are low and high values of the two parameters. And we're going to give them a code. We'll use negative 1 for the low value temperature, positive 1 for the high value temperature, negative 1 for the low value pressure, and one for the high value pressure. So we're going to set up three identical experiments. We're going to look at a low, low value of temperature and pressure, negative one and negative one, a low, high value, negative one and one, a high value, low value, high value, high value. The cell next to it, well that's temperature and pressure, then we have the product of the two, where this is just equal to the temperature low value times the pressure low value. So negative one times negative one is positive one. Negative one times one is negative one, and so forth. And what I have here are calculated values of the specific volume V hat using the ideal gas law. So we'll think of this as our experimental data that we measure. And then I repeated this experiment another trial. And same values of low and high for temperature and pressure. And then what I did was I threw in a little bit of experimental error uh, just to make this interesting for V hat. And then I did it a third time. So I have negative one and negative one for temperature and pressure and again I have V hat. So for two parameters we do four experiments and then we replicate those four experiments two more times and this will give us our data set. Now we're going to use a feature of Excel that will allow us to come up with a model that looks like V hat is some intercept plus slope times T plus another slope times P plus a third slope times temperature times pressure. Okay, so I'm going to go under my data menu and I want to choose data analysis. Uh, this is an add-in in Excel so if this does not appear under your data menu bar you'll have to go to add-ins and put that in there. I'm going to click on data analysis and I want to select regression and click OK and I come up with another menu. The first menu is the input the Y range. This is what is the variable that we're measuring. In our case it's specific volume and I'm going to select that and I'm going to include the label on that. So I have the V hat and all my Y data. Close that window. My X range. Now I'm going to select all three columns. Temperature and pressure and temperature times pressure. And I'll close that menu. I'll tell Excel that this these columns have labels in them. And I'm looking for a 95% confidence interval and I'm going to select my output range to be uh, we'll stick that right here on our s spreadsheet click OK and I'll click OK again and it comes out with a summary output and so 
we look at the coefficients column, the intercept, we got 24.5. That is the B value. The coefficient for T is 1.33. That will be M1. The pressure, negative 8.26. That will be M2. And temperature times pressure, negative 0.172. That's M3. So let's see how well our model does at predicting the V hat for these conditions. So I'm going to put in an equal sign. Okay. And it's going to need a coefficient B. So I'm going to click on intercept. And I'm going to hit F4 to anchor it. Then I'm going to add to it the slope for the temperature. Hit the F4 to anchor it, and I'm going to multiply it by the temperature. In this case, I'm selecting that negative 1 code. Then I'm going to look at the second slope, which will be for the pressure. F4, and multiply it by the pressure code. And then lastly, I'll add the third intercept or slope for the TP. Anchor that. Multiply that by TP and hit enter. So this is my model value, 31.3, and we had a value of 30.6. And I can drag this down. And let's take a look at how well the model and the experimental values compare. I'll put these in center so we can see them better. So we have 15.3, 15.1. 32.2, 31.3, 35, 34.3. So we see that this statistical model can do a pretty good job at predicting what the actual data should be generated by the ideal gas law. And so now we have, if we know temperature and pressure, we can calculate the specific volume of an ideal gas using this model as well. And this will allow us to generate uh, functional models they would not be great for extrapolating, but they do work well for within the range of our temperature and pressure.